I've seen a you with a hoodie half on his face like this, walking towards me, side by side. Boxcar slips out of his sweater. He's just getting closer and closer to me. My other bridge is coming out of school at the same time, and I know he's always got it closer. So I'm like, yo, light my man up. Next thing you hear, I just hear gunfire. So I don't know who's shooting. I feel something hit me in the back. And I look down at my Coogee sweater. I've got a hole here and a hole here. We was living in Tottenham at the time. Um, from there, we moved to, what was it? I think it was Woodside Park. So we was in Woodside Park for a bit. Mum had the idea to do a business venture in Belgium. So she went to Belgium. And when she came back, Mega didn't recognise her. So that made her upset. So she was like to my dad, I'm taking the boys with me to Belgium and that. So we lived in, uh, yeah, Brussels in Belgium for like three years, three and a half years. Yeah, we were speaking like fluent French. And writing French and all yeah. that. By the time we were young, like four or five years old. Around that period. And came back, forgot it, forgot it all. Had a mad, mad weird accent. Secondary school, we was living in uh, Cricklewood at that time. Like borderline Cricklewood, Golders Green, around that area. So we was going to Clare House. And then from Clare House, that's when we finally moved to East Finchley. Um, it was Come Fly With Me documentary, Michael Jordan documentary. From my seeing that documentary, him as well, it was, that's it, basketball was my, my favourite changer. sport. Yeah, it was a game changer completely. Got basketball. My mum would go to trips on America and that would say, yeah, get this Chris Webber kit for us and whatnot. And yeah, my godmother was from San Francisco because my mum used to be, uh, our mum, yeah, used to be an air hostess. So she was flying with, um, what was it, American Airlines? It was American Airlines, isn't it? Was it? No, she wasn't with American Fer Airlines. Was it Fer What was it? No, she was within the Nigerian Airlines No, but it switched time. from that one to, I thought it was American Airlines. You switched to an American one? No, it, was, no, it wasn't American. I think it might have been London. Oh, okay. British Airways. So yeah, but then, yeah, so she... I don't know, She, one of her friends, my, my godmother, she lived in San Francisco, so we would, she, we went over then for like, when we were like eight, innit? Like eight, nine, ten, around yeah. that time? Yeah. So then, and that was around the time Dream Team played as well in Barcelona, so that was on TV. And so that was like, that was iconic. Anyone who knows about basketball, that was like, that was MJ. Iconic team, yeah. But that was Barkley, that was Pippin. That was fucking calm. Anyway, Jordan, you know Jordan. It, it was it was mad. It's literally like having Pat, Biggie, Nas, and Jay all on one team. That's what that was. So like that was super inspiring. Me, I wasn't I wasn't athletic, but I had a love for for ball. So like I just made myself get good, and that's when I knew I could just do whatever I wanted to do if I liked it. Then I would, you know, what I'm saying like naturally, I don't think I have a a voice that you hear and think, oh shit, your voice is great. But I worked at bars and being nice so that's what kind of showed me that I could do that through the ball thing like being short and then playing power forward you don't really you know what I mean you're supposed to be, you have some height or some weight about you but but yeah so in London we was um, from the age of about 14 15 I was recruited to play for London Towers by a coach called Joe White from Hackney and um, I started playing for London Towers for a couple of years he was playing for London Leopards at the time. And he used to, yeah. Yeah, he got into some beef in Whitechapel, so he never went back. <laughs> and, uh, I went back that one time, done some Yeah, we did a mission for us, <laughs> and then he never went back after that. And then uh, um, I was playing, yeah, London Towers, Hackney, Homerton's usually where we used to play. And um, what was the name of the school that we used to play in? It was Haggerston ha and the other one, Homerton as oh, well. Okay, yeah. Haggerston and Homerton we used to play, so we used to play over there like three times a week. Then I played for Brixton for a year. And there was a player from Brixton that went to New York and was already playing in Staten Island. And he's come back and he's telling us, yeah, New York's this and that, high school's like this, chain swinging, you know what I mean? So man, was like, yeah, yeah, man, I need to get out of there. So I spoke to his coach. His coach was like, send me a videotape or come out here. If you're as good as Kevin is the, the name of our bridge that was playing over there, then yeah, you can come over here and play for us. And he was staying with like a, a foster, foster family. Well, not family, like an older woman. I thought, I'm definitely going to get on the team, we go over there. So I ran an idea to mum, I'm like, yeah, mum, look, you know, you get, let us both go over there, go to high school, and I have to pay for college. And then time down in America, like 40 Gs a semester and all that, so I get a free, free ride and whatever. So she thought, mm, well, that sounds like a good idea. Asked my dad, my dad was like, nah, they, they can't go over there. She was like, listen, just, just, just hear me out. 
So we went over there, they both came with us, and we went to Staten Island to go check it out, and instantly the coach was on me. As soon as he saw my um, athletic ability, see a dunk from more or less anywhere, shoot from more or less anywhere, he was like, yeah. Before I left, mm -hmm. there was a top 60 in the UK camp that Kobe Bryant's dad was running, Adidas camp. That um, a few of us from London Towers went over there because a lot of the players was playing for London Towers at the time. And um, we just dominated from, from we got there. And it's like, uh, it was Loughborough University. So you get there, you get your basketball, um, Adidas kits, Kobe Bryant trainers at the time, Adidas, all free stuff. And you're staying there in dorms. Upper Cliffham, up and down the country as well, Sheffield, Manchester, all those type of places was there as well, but majority from London, because a lot of the best players were from London. And yeah, I was in the All-Star game, selected for the top 12 and everything like that. We went crazy over there. It was hood, mate. It had the number one, had the number one dropout rate in, the, in Staten Island. It, it was called New Dorp, but they called it New Drop. It was mad. It was like, meth used to go there as well. Method man. Um, yeah, it was just like, it was just mental. Like, fights popping off. Um, things holding, like, girls holding man's hammers in their book bag, looking all innocent. But I had to, like, it, it was mad. Like, it was crazy. Like, Basically, we thought there. it was going to be like a, like a proper, you know, usually if you go to America, you're going to go to a prep we school. We thought it was going to be some, you know what I mean? Well, we thought it might be like, mm -hmm. saved by the bell, but with more black people. Yeah. But it ended up being like yeah. 187. Yeah, yeah. More like <laughs> you that, seen like, that with Samuel L in it? It was like yeah, security that on every vibe. floor, very dark. Yeah, so security. It was, like, it, was, yeah. it was more like the way it was. The structure was more like a prison rather than yeah. It was structured like the way it was, like the wing, like it was like wings, like the way it was structured. Definitely buzzers going dark. off, everyone yeah. in different places. So everyone had to be in in a classroom or either lunch when the buzzer went off. There shouldn't be no one in the halls. That's how you know. Like people ain't, 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 you know what I mean? Ain't supposed to be in the halls or like that. When a buzzer goes off, you better be in the classroom type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you weren't going to school, if you bunking off, police are bringing you back to the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get caught. If you get caught thing. outside and you ain't they, like you, they, they're gonna like. Yeah, if you're a certain age, pull you up. Yeah, pull up on and you. During the time of eight to like four, they know you're supposed to be in school. They see you in the street, they're grabbing you. Same way you'd have um, COs in the jail. You got security in the school because it goes off. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. Intense, bro. It's like three hours a day, um, six days a week. So I used to have to go in there on Saturdays, and that's not including games. So it was intense. Like Mega was playing in the beginning. Then I came in, I was like, "Rad." So there's no showers, and it's like, and I'm gonna have and to we go got, to school. We got, yeah, we got to play Work, before like, school. Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the hallway and talk to things. Good. Yeah. So I, I kept it up and kept in what the competition level is serious. But the thing with America, they take sports seriously, like. Um, Games, people from the hoods come and it's packed. I've signed autographs at one point, so yeah, they they um they really take the sports. Yeah, they really champion Our their school athletes. Our was football. number one for football for the women's, and we had a really good American football team as well. A few people from our school went to the NFL and all that as well. So. Like aliens. Yeah. Literally, like aliens. They'd yeah. never seen nothing like it before. It was, it was, they was kind of used to it a little bit because Kevin was over there for a year already, but what he'd went and done is told everyone, my little brothers are coming. So they probably expected so by the to time, like Yeah, by the time we got there, they was already prepared. Like, first day of school, we walked in there and girls were describing us like, oh, I'm so-and-so, I heard you're Kevin's brothers and all that. So they just, they're very forward over there. Yeah. Like, super forward. So, um, yeah, this whole school knew we was coming before we came there. So it was like a spectacle. There were certain times you had to check people though, like not even so much just because of the England thing, because they was kind of disrespectful to Africans. And as you know, like when if people don't know, we're Nigerian. So if I would hit, overhear it, it wouldn't, even if it, was, it wasn't it was target, it wasn't to, to me, I'd be like, what? And I'd, and I'd go off, no, no, you're not, you're not, you're not African, you're from you're, London. You're from London. Yeah. It's like, they didn't even get what a diaspora was, or I don't think they they really got it. Like they're starting to get it now. When I'm seeing people going, oh yeah, we're gonna go and go on for Christmas. It's like about fucking time, because we was over there and they was like looking at 
being African like it like it wasn't a thing. It's like like every black person, like every man or every person on this earth doesn't originate from Africa. It was just it was ruled backwards. So a lot of the time I, I would get into dumb shit like that because there, there, there was a lot of librarians in our school. So I found co um, camaraderie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with, with them because obviously man's Nigerian and that. But like yeah, they were just they just didn't get it. They was like, wow, you got you got McDonald's in London. Like you oh, celebrate like, Christmas. Like they just like I remember at one point my bridge from home. <laughs> My brother from Holland was with me, and then um, his girlfriend hit him and said, "Oh, where was you?" And he goes, "Oh, I was over here. Oh, so ask my brother from London. London people don't lie." She goes, "Oh, well, where was he?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was over here." She goes, "Oh, okay then." I thought the news. I can't be this dumb. That it was mental. You see that, what I'm oh, 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 stop, stop speaking that funny London language. It's like what English? <laughs> what? Yeah, Engl like that. English. To point, like, if what? me and him was to start talking in slang. They it's wouldn't like even understand we're talking it. Whole yeah, language. they wouldn't even understand so it. So we would just go into yeah. So yeah, but no, no, we got, we got a lot of love though, a lot of love, a lot of love, and um, and it, and what it is is it because it makes you stand out because you're obviously a commodity, so people are more likely to hear you out. If you talk to someone, you say yo, da da, and you, they, they'll be like, oh, where are you from? So it's like a conversation starter. It's like so that that from there, really, if you've got anything that you've you've got an ability or anything that people are interested in, they're more likely to. You know, Plus I mean, the take fashion it in. was crazy. Yeah, and we stood out with what we wore as well, and it was it was it wasn't it wasn't the way they dropped. Like you know, London man dropped in a different kind of way. You can even tell within the UK. Like if, if I'm in Brom, if I'm I'm in Manny, I'm in Liverpool, you're gonna know. Oh, he's from London. You get me? So like, imagine that overseas in the 90s where they're wearing oversized baggy velour, this and that. A man's coming through in fucking. Peyton Versace fucking tracksuits up and down with a Versace fucking headband. We had Moschino and, and, bed sheets. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, nature. man was just moving, it was just stupid because of the Pro Beto era. So That's the image from, yeah, of yeah. alone was just like, it was just too advanced. It was like, even rappers went up on it like that. It wasn't a money thing. It was like a, it was a touch of class. Like me, I, like, I used to dress more grown then than I do now. Like, I'm a big man now. When I was 16, 17, man's wearing blazers with Patrick Cock loafers and trousers. We had to, you had to, you had to, you had to show out. You couldn't, you couldn't come to a, you couldn't can't go like how you see. You said you saw me out in East. You can't be out in just a t-shirt and jeans. A how man like you now. So we already hold up. Sorry. We already came in a way where it was like we already knew what how it was set. Like just the whole image, everything else. Like people was interested in who we were before we they even knew we could rap. So it's like more like. Oh, but can you rap though? It was like that kind of thing. Same kind of thing when people would see us, they'd always make comments on like the image and shit because it was it was different from what everyone else was doing. And when we did rap and we're talking about that shit, we've got on, so it made it more potent. Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, man from the pro beat or whatever. If someone else pops up like, yeah, I can rap, they're gonna come get you. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I got my guy, like, do you know what I mean? So it's like a word of mouth, it's like, oh, people will come and try to see, oh, what's the word? From other schools, like, man, yeah. come to the school, like, almost like, like it's a fight, you get me? And then, yeah, where's my man? Go get my man, the, 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 the yeah. crowds around it. Almost, it, it, it almost popped up a few times. Yeah. That's how we started to get into our first little beefs, because we just disrespect the man with the bars, we've got it on, it's getting aggressive, man, poking each other in the chest and all that type of stuff, and then, you're getting embarrassed, so. They didn't take us serious at all at first. Like, they, like, obviously, because we've been over there, so we're saying shit that we know it, they're going to react to in a certain type of way because we already know how, how their mind is, how their psyche is. So it's almost like cheating because you already know the stuff that you say or do that makes them think, oh, London, oh, London is ill. So you just play on it and, like, you can, do you know what I mean? Like, it's a different, it's almost like playing to their perceptions almost. And so it was almost like, you, you could win even if you weren't even as good as you were. But then on top of that, you're actually, your flows are crazy. Cause we, we, we was into hip hop from day. Like before we rapped, we listened, like I used to watch the MTV rap videos and then tape them with my VHS and then run them back and then watch them over and over again. Like man grew up on all kinds of hip hop though. It wasn't just a bait hip hop. It was like far side. It was like just souls of mischief, that. fucking, you know what I'm saying? D De La Soul um, tribe, but then man's listening to hard shit like Kooji rap and then fucking pun and then fucking mob deep. And so it's like, it, it, it wasn't just like we got these set artists that we listened to. We listened to all of it and we just soaked it up because we was into it. We wasn't even into, into it when it wasn't even so much the rap aspect, when it was like graffiti era and 
people was breakdancing that because we was just advanced. We was just into what we was into and we just focused on it. When you're young, you know you fixate on something and that's the one thing that never left. Like you might be like, oh, we're skating this, this month. Oh, you tell your parents, oh yeah, we're skating. You're on your bowels, your road shades. Then you're like, next two months from there, you're like, oh, I'm going to do karate. You're, you're always switching, doing something when you're young. You know what I mean? But the one thing that stuck is hip hop and it just stayed all the way through. So by then we already... We already knew their culture, they didn't know ours. So it's almost like a secret weapon, like, oh, we know what you lot talk about, what you do, but you don't know about uh, what we do. So we just always oh, just gave it up like that and just put our twist on it. And just, so we weren't, we weren't back here for all the, um, we, was, we was around for like garage, like a little bit, but when all the shit kind of turned into like two step with man chatting on it and thing, we missed all that. So we didn't have that influence in our, in our, in our music, it was just, straight hip hop shit, but from our take of it. In the mecca as well. You know what I mean? Like, it was almost like our, like, hey, we're here to invade and this is what we do, but we do it even iller, because we've, we've seen all, like, we've, we've traveled, we, you know what I mean? We've acquired a certain amount of knowledge where a lot of people wouldn't have seen that shit because they hadn't, they hadn't done it. So you couldn't really speak from our, our standpoint, you understand? So I think that's why we've always, always been a bit different from everyone else but sometimes it can hinder you because it's like people might not relate to that or might not even see it as something possible, you know? Like people's like, just kind of look at you like when you're telling the story, like, oh, like is this even real? Is yeah, this fabricated? Yeah, if fabricated, we had more platforms yeah. like this when we was coming Back up, then, yeah. then people would have seen it. Or if there was a YouTube, then people would see us doing it. You'd see us in the studio with Nicky doing the tingle. You'd see us rolling with Cam in the Pink Range or, you know what I'm saying? But there was not no visual, so it's almost like a myth. It's almost like a legend. Like, did that really happen? Did that really take place? So yeah, that's what it is. Veterans touch, I toot my own horn with the elephant tusk and get these rapper brothers stuck like a cat and in bar, Sure, sure, we won't play fair. What happened was, um, it's getting out there now that we, we rap. We're still, we're, we're good, but we're not still at the level where it's like levels, right? So, um, there's a chick that's come to my yard and she's with her friends and whatnot. And she goes, oh, I heard you lot rap. You want to link my brother? I said, who's your brother? She goes, Jacob York. I said, what? Jacob York, the CEO of entertainment with Un Undeas, Trump, signed yeah. Lil' Kim and Cam and all them lot. She was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, 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 set that up. And that's when I realised, like, it's easy to get in built. I'd rather do the, the, the music thing rather than the basketball. Because Mega set it off from, from, from go. I was playing basketball. I was so tired, I can't even do homework. I'm falling asleep in the showers. Remember, man's out there on our own. So we've got to wake ourselves up to go to school. It's a different type of motivation. So he was going off already in the lunchroom. I'm coming out, man, and saying, your brother's going off. So yeah, she's I'm, like, yeah, you want to come link my brother. We can go link him, whatever, whatever. So I'll, one day I'm looking at the clock, I'm thinking, oh, basketball practice needs to end quick so man can jump in this cab and go to Manhattan. So man jumped in the cab, drove all the way to Manhattan from Staten Island, went to go see him in a meeting, and um, he basically told us, yeah, 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 I heard you like from London, you want to get a record deal, but I'm just going to tell you like this from straight. London will never, ever be street credible in America when it comes to rapping. We was like, we're going to prove him wrong. We was mad yeah, determined. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. we was just like, do, do you know what it is? We had this belief that we was gonna kill it and we was gonna do big shit even when we weren't even like, we were, we were like, we were sick on a level of street. We could project our voice, we could, we had, you know what I mean? We had the presence, we could do, we could do all that, we could chew man up, but we didn't, we weren't nice in a way where you go to the studio and create a song and like structure it and have a concept and we, we weren't even no, ready to like that. To be honest, that. when we linked him, we weren't even ready. We weren't even ready, we weren't even ready on a, we weren't even ready on a, on a, on a tip on the street tip, was we? Was, we, was, we, was, we? we was ready for Staten Island. We, yeah. like, we, we weren't was, ready to take it like yeah, Harlem yeah, yeah, and yeah, over, yeah, like, the over, over the top, other yeah. places. Yeah, we weren't they're, ready they're top boys and other ends and all that type of stuff. We was local, like, oh yeah, they're good for some youths. But I think the gas, like, do you like, know what like, it is? The gas and of our name ringing for different things and just being them, them, them guys, like, that's what kind of put the battery in I would say our back in order for us to get nicer with it. And then obviously soaking it, soaking up all the kind of shit. That's around the time when the DVD era started coming as well. It wasn't Smack and everything else, but it was like certain hood DVDs that you'd have to get about. What was the one that Major Figures was on? Remember that one? 
What was remember. that? But I can't remember. Anyway, the, that's it, when it started it, circling it, it, around. It was around the time Cam was doing the whole um, SDE. And Stretch stuff. Armstrong. Stretch Armstrong had a thing on, 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 on Sunday. Sundays on the Hot Night 7. That and, and was they had crazy. On it. Man, every, every time people would go on there, they would just shut it down. Tigger like, had in the basement when man's coming yeah, in the basement and, and going, yeah. man. Jewels had just got with Cam and we heard him on the radio for the first time. So Jewels had just got with Cam probably a month in. This is, these are the times where learning how to rap and you know what I mean, getting nice and getting certain influences. From so around the time we are the street strong. Yeah, up and, coming, that up and coming thingy. So that Rough Riders was running it. Um, Rockefeller was on their way to taking over and yeah, Cam was doing SDE. He, I remember that time. And that's another thing that made us think that we could do it as well, is because we, we would always we would always bump into people. We would always meet people, like just randomly, like just famous people. And we would just see them or someone who was linked with someone who could get you situated. Remember that brother that we met from the Rough Riders brother? Remember? What's yeah, it? yeah, we was, in, we was in Fulton Street and then there was a, a guy that used to run with Rough Riders that said, yeah, we rap for him. And he was like, yeah, 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 you need to be down with me. I'm going to manage you guys. So we went back to the school like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be managed by Rough Riders and all that. But he was a loose affiliation. He wasn't really down with them like that. You know, no one's there. But man, we carried went back to the school. Yeah, man's going to get down with DMX and them lot. And you know what I mean? No, what about it was the show. It was the show. It was the show upstate that, that really get a gas man up. Yeah, yeah. So our brethren lined up a show in um, Binghamton, upstate New York. And we jumped in the Jeep. Long drive, probably like eight hours, six hours, or something heard. like that. You, you, you and hate uh, me, you can hate Nars me drop, can you hate me Jeez. now? This guy Flex, mad, was dropping it, pulling it after ten seconds, bro. dropping it, pulling it after ten it was seconds. Was like an hour for half an hour, bro, like half an hour before bro. the tune actually really dropped. You know, no one's there. Like, so we've done the show. Show gone down. We've got little groupies or whatnot. Gone back to the hotel, Mate. did that thing. After we came back, he didn't go to school for two weeks. Bruv, I went to school, but I just didn't go into the class. No, bruv. no, he didn't go to school. He didn't, don't listen to him. He <laughs> didn't go to school for two weeks, bro. I had this <laughs> teacher calling me. I had to go see his teacher. She's like, where's your parents? I'm like, we are, like, well, they're in England. She goes, what? Have, you, we you, had you're motivating yourself to come to the thing yourselves. All right, just make sure you go to school. Meeting. You can sign off for him and what or not. No, they've had a meeting with me. They told me, ah, oh, if you, like, we need you to attend. If you're not attending your classes and you're not thingying, then we're going to have to, like, you're not going to be able to go to school here. So yeah. I was like, all right, cool. So then that's when I had to roll off the high summer school, and so, summer school you know, and night school. We was off the higher performance so much. Ah, oh, forget high. school. We didn't even go. Yeah, we just chilling in the yard. I'm going playing basketball, coming back, and seeing was, them there. I was smoking. I was, sm I was smoking good and playing Dreamcast. Bro. You know, one of them ones there. So that's how gas the, the show got, man. Where it's like, yeah. oh, no, man, can't do like, this, 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 yeah. this is the life. I chose. Oh, this is this is about. This is about what? what you say about a year after that? Yeah, probably about a year after. That. About a year after that. So the, for the first year, we weren't really, um, we weren't really. We was outside, but we weren't. We wasn't outside, outside. So we'd go shopping in Brooklyn and do these type of things and all that. So we've moved from our apartment building to the next building to a smaller building because Kevin, after high school, he's, he's graduated high school. He's gone back to England. So it's just the two of us left now. Bro, man's coming out the yard, so drippy, iceberg. A Virexes, all that type of stuff. The security that worked in the building had used the master key to go in the yard and steal some bits. So we come back home. It's like, wow, half the bits is missing. What's going on? Man's where, 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 where's where's all bits? The guy yeah. had, so, you know, you know the so imagine the madness, right? Man's, man's leaving out the next day. We say to the security guard, imagine. I oh, didn't even get the good shit. See these iceberg fingers? They didn't even get the, the, the proper stuff. Not well, knowing that's look the after guy the yard. done it. Man's gone Brooklyn, isn't it? Yeah. Look after the yard and that. We know you're out here and all that. Man's got a master key. He's gone in there because the next day we're flying back to England. He's gone in there. The suitcase already packed. Man just took the suitcases, bro. Just zipped up the suitcases. Thingy. We came back to closet swinging. All bro. we had on was what, all, what we all were All that wearing. was left. So man's come back to England. Pissed. Pissed. You know how long that man had to build up that collection? Bro, man, it, it, it was so lit. Man went to see Belly, didn't even know that um, Nas was wearing that, the white AV. Remember the one with the Abrex and thing, it's got the USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All three of us man, on there, we got the white AVs on. Man, That's how man was doing it. All three of us wearing the same white AV. So when we got up to walk out the cinema, man, look, people looking at it like, whoa, whoa, was there a plan? That was, that that man, was a moment, it? I'm not going to lie. I'm saying? So I'm, they've I'm, taken all of that, all of that's gone. Like, everything's gone. Man's come back to England with what man was wearing to go to Brooklyn to go see the chicks and whatever. We come back, we've gone uptown. Spent mad money, mad shopping, bumped into Jadakiss and all that, moved this close to the side, like, put the pile on. 
gave me the CD. He said, oh, right, right, who are you, man? Because we're spending mad money in there. Like, come back to Staten Island. One by one, you're seeing people pop up. Man, swears, swears on and all that. Man, spits on. So man just start attacking, man. Like, what? I was like, where, you know what? You I don't from? mind about this because clearly you've never been in my yard. Like, I, I, I know you to see you around, but you, you clearly didn't take it. Let me know where you got that from or it's going to be problems. Man don't want to tell me where it's from. Ming Mao, Ming Mao, Ming Mao. I beat, I beat him out of that, like I almost beat him out of his, 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 his jumper. Like it was that bad. I yapped him at the same time, but it was school. So when I went back, there was like, we had a meeting, there was like, oh, you got to give him his chain back and blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're gonna, I was like, oh, here you go. And yeah, that was basically it. that was it. So like one by one, we're just moving to anyone. We're moving to anyone. We're seeing we find out it's a security guard. And he's moved. We plan to make even... a move on him. He's moved to Florida or gone wherever he's gone to. But that's when that's what started to get men like, oh, these men think we're playing out here and all that. They must think we're the security guards doing us, but the master key, all right, watch this. You see what I'm saying? And things, so just... and things are treacherous as well. Things are like, oh, them London boys, they get money, they They're walk living around by with themselves. a bag of you thingies, might run up in there. So the more the names ringing bells, and man's living up to the name ringing bells, the haters are now starting to pop up out of the woodworks and these things like that. Basically, Meg has gone to night school because he stopped kind of going to school, thinking he's a rap star and all that early. So he's gone to night school and um, I don't know where this shoot was from. This crit you he's walking around with a red bandana on his, on, his, um, on his shoe. And that's a sign of disrespect. He's dragging around the red bandana. So one of the Damu see him, and instead of checking him, goes to Mega, oh, there's a, there's a Crip guy that's, that's, that's got the red thing on his foot, and we're like, yeah, you should go, you should go get next to him. Mega doesn't even think, you see what I'm saying? Mega gets next to him straight away. Boom, 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 gets into it with him, whatever, ever, ever. Takes, takes the thing off his foot, gives him the business. I run into him afterwards. I told him, don't come back to this night school again, innit? Especially don't don't come back around here. We've we run around here, innit? So now I'm pissed off at the, the youth that's told him that because that, that other guy's been a member for, for years. So what's he what's he why are you sending it to, to someone else? And he's my little brother, so I don't even you know what I mean? I don't even want it, him to be getting into that type of shit like that. So I said, you know what, watch when I see my man. Around the wrong people. They've gone back and told him. So I've come round the corner one day to go to night school to go just check girls, because our, our school was the main school in Staten Island. All the other schools would go night school too. Yeah, or, some, or summer school. There's so, like three, three main schools that everyone in the borough goes to, whether for summer school or night school. Our one was the main one. So everyone from different schools would come in there. So I've turned the corner with one of my brethren, and the youth's there, but he's there with all his brethren from Stapleton Projects and Park Hill Projects. So I think, oh, bro, they're all here, it's an ambush. I can't turn around, they've seen me now. So I've walked up on him, he's walked out from the crowd. We've met in the middle. I said, bro, how are you, how are you sending my little brother to go on missions and all that when, when you see my man and you didn't do nothing? And he's like, oh, 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 I heard you put the hair out on me. What's all this about? I said, bro, fuck all that. I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about the other thing. Boom, he's hit me. And I was like, oh, I'm like, bro, ate that. I said, watch this. Me and him start scrapping. I've hit him with a couple of combos. Now I've got him in a headlock, I'm just pounding them out, giving, giving them the business. I've seen a youth with a hoodie, half on his face like this, walking towards me, side by side. Box car slips out of his sweater. He's just getting closer and closer to me. Now I've got my hands busy because I've got the youth underneath me. So I think this guy's going to rip my whole face open. My other bridge is coming out of school at the same time, and I know he's always got it closer. So I'm like, yo, light my man up. Next thing you hear, hey, I just hear gunfire. So I don't know who's shooting. I carry on just doing my business. Next thing I know, the guy that, with the, that tried to cut me with a razor, he's on the floor with a hole in his leg, smoking. So now I don't know whether to jump off this guy, jump on this guy's face for trying to cut me or carry on with this guy. I had another shot go off. But now I've seen my brethren. He's not shooting. <laughs> so who's shooting? So I thought, just keep doing what you need to do because he's close. They're not going to shoot their own brethren. I feel something hit me in the back, like I got hit in the back of the back. This guy almost suplexes me. I give him a quick uppercut and I'm out of there. 
My brother's like, oh, you hit, you hit. And I look down at my Kooji sweater. I've got a hole here and a hole here. But you had two Kooji's on? Yeah. You had two Kooji's so on? I lift up one Kooji, the second one's got two holes in them. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I lift it up. So it's like a deep gray. So it just took a big chunk out of me. But it's sizzling. My other brethren starts crying. I'm like, no, no, let's get back to the crib quickly. We've gone back to the crib. By the time we got back there, one of my other brethren's run to the thing to tell him already. He's running through the back way towards the school. I'm like, no, 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 come here. He's crying and all that. I'm like, bro, I'm good, bro. It's not even that, that serious. I'm going back around it, whatever. I called two of my brethren. We jumped in the car, circled around Park Hill, couldn't see no one, went back home and all that. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was like a, a grey slash fruit. It's a 357, though. The big, the big one, the big teeth. Like that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, three, yeah, 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 the three fifty-seven. So it was just like a big chunk out of me sizzling. I was more concerned with gunpowder um, poisoning than anything. There was no shells in me or nothing like that. So I just left it, put plaster on it, some tissue, whatever, <laughs> bandage it up, go. <laughs> smoked it off. Next day, I come back outside the school, Kooji shorts on, slippers, like nothing happened. So the, it just circulated like, well, my man's alive, you know. He's, yeah, I come into school, certain man's trying to talk to me. I'm like, bro, no one can chat to me. Don't help me. But yeah, he's basically coming to school, switched on all the members that's out there. Like, you know, man affiliate. What's, why is this even happening to man? Like, whatever, whatever it may be. So it's, it, it, it's circulated like, what? These men are out for revenge. It's serious, whatever, whatever. So we've got men coming to our school to um, come and squash it and all that type of stuff. Then we had a mediator in between that said, yeah, they're coming to the school. They want to come sit down. Man shouldn't be beefing anyway. Everyone's all affiliated to the same side. Um, we're coming through the back way and gang unit roll up on us. Mm. So they're asking man's names and whatnot. They ask date of birth. I said, we both saw our date of birth. They but said, we you say, say date of birth way, backwards. Because we say 25th, uh, 25th, 7th. They say 7th, 25th. So, yeah, from London. They was like, oh, 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 London, London. Oh, yeah, we've got them, we've got them, we've got them. So they throw they me in. Like that, no, they go like that. And you go, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they, they check the thing. They say, oh, this one's been to the, the. So they wrap us up took us to the um, police station and just interrogating us because they didn't know what would happen. Because my man had to go to the hospital, the youth that was trying to cut me with a box cut, he's in the hospital. I'm in the, I've, I fall asleep because I'm waiting so long because so they're they, talking to yeah, him for hours. Interrogating me. And I'm just, I end up falling asleep in like a chair, kind of like this. And then uh, I just wake up to a man well, look, climbing up to me and pulling, like pulling my seat, like pulling my seat forward. So I'm like, oh, and then like, he's like, Yo, so, so, so what's going on? Oh, so, so, so what happened? Tell me what happened. And it was like, I don't know what happened. I wasn't around. I was playing, I was playing in the yard with my wifey, just playing games. Oh, no, no, no. So, 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 oh, your brother got hit. Oh, maybe, maybe you were the one doing the shooting. And then maybe he got hit in return. And, uh, and I'm like, nah, mate, like I wasn't there. <laughs> like, so they're just trying to work brain or do whatever they're doing. And then eventually they just let us go because we're just like, that's all. Like, we but they, yeah, but they wanted to come back to the yard to take my clothes to, um, for forensics, yeah, for forensics, forensics and whatnot and everything like that. So we're walking back to the yard because the station was like a five, six minute walk to the yard. They've gone to the yard. My brothers are in the yard. Knocked on the door. My brothers like, who's that? It's Jamal, son. It's Jamal. Damn man, breathed out the window. So we're getting to the door now. They've like, come back around. <laughs> open the door, open the door. We're like, what's going on? We open the door, you can see burger sizzling still on the pan. <laughs> Window <laughs> open, breezing out and all that. Now they're on us, they're looking through our staff, yeah. going through the thing. Really, they shouldn't, they shouldn't even be doing that. Oh, so he goes to the drawer. Oh, I'll go to the drawer. He opens the drawer, there's nothing in the drawer. I'm like, thank God there's nothing in the drawer. You know, you get me? So, um, Go through pictures, they took pictures or whatever, took man's clothes or whatever. They were just on man for like after that for about six months after that. But that's when, yeah, they start to, why are these London youths out here and why are they getting shot? Why is the next youth shot? So they were basically trying to see if it was me that, that in, shot retaliation in retaliation or whatever, or whatever happened or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. You see when they say in a New York minute, anything can change. That is the truest shit I've ever heard because it can just, it's different. Like time over there, it, things can just shift and before you know it, you're in the next mode. And it's not even like you're trying to be, because we're not, anyone that knows us, anyone who's met me, anyone who, like, I'll just, I like, I like, I like, obviously it's family first, got, got over everything. But man like getting to the peas, man like getting fresh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like having fun, like, like that's like it. Like around the women. But yeah. But, I will not tolerate any form of disrespect. I will not. I'm a man at first, before anything. So it's just that. It's just like when you get that kind of level of attention and people just hating or you just get into certain things, you just end up 
subjected to some some crazy shit. So if the environment's crazy, it can get crazy. I remember we're talking about New York City, bro. Yeah. This is this ain't New York City now. This ain't this gentrified shit that people are going over to and doing yeah. whatever. This is New York in a crack era. Like this is this is grown women with, with that are old enough to be your mother getting slashed because they got a red red hat on and a red fucking blazer. That's don't the, come out. Yeah, that's don't the come out. Remember shit. the first year we got there. Don't come out. That's Halloween. the type of stuff. Well, don't they, wear no they red on. during Halloween. Like or whatever. It, it, this was a different. This is a different New York. This is New York where it's like man that's from out there can't be outside. You feel me? So it's a it's a it's a totally different thing. But with us, we weren't we weren't. We, obviously, when you're younger, you're fearless anyway. You know what I'm saying? But and we because because we never had no intentions of like we always just carried ourselves like you know what if shit happens we, we, we're gonna back it. But we're not we're not coming out here looking for that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it, it, it some shit's un unavoidable. And you're not gonna victimize me because I'm from London. No, gorillas and apes here in fake gear. Son, you, we ain't kidding, no. This ain't daycare. Might let the 4 4 go or the 8 flare. We liked it, but like I said, we no, I didn't, really, I didn't really like it. But we went outside, outside I really like, like that. that. I wanted to go home. You after see, that after all that happened with the um, with the clothes. Security taking the clothes, man pounding man out, and um, me getting hit and whatever, ever, and retaliating and whatever. Now we're entrenched in it. You see what I'm saying? Then when we came back to London, London was kind of foreign to me because we've been out there, what, two years, two and a half years at yeah. that point? It just felt like being on holiday somewhere that you've been before, but it almost like it wasn't home anymore because you didn't, you didn't really understand it, like the culture, things shift. You know, because London is, is a, such a. It, there's like there's different sections like there's different times like this London is a totally different London than ten years ago like every few years there's like an evolution yeah, there's a, it evolves yeah. and it turns into something else it's like even certain areas that you might have been in it's like this ain't the ends that I used to be in this is like a mad different vibe like so for for us we went at a time where London was going through one of those shifts anyway so by the time we came back it had, it'd gone in fully into so yeah. it was almost like super alien to us. So after a while, we got used to it. But yeah, when we got back, like actually got back, moved back from America, we was just like, you know what? Let's just focus on what we, what we good, what we're good at, and what we love. You know what I'm saying? Cause but we got I know what I've got a memory of. We come back, we had the white AVs on. We got into a choice of M rave. By the time we've left the rave, man got pen marks on the back of the white AV. So then in my brain, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is, I remember why the difference between America and here. America, they're gonna congratulate you. London, they're gonna hate. You. And that's just the way it was. I couldn't believe the level, like the level push man will give you just because you was fly, just because you're getting money, just because you you're around girls. A man will think in America, well, I guess all the girls. I need to be, I need to get next to him, so I can. Yeah, they do. I can get some of the do. sprays kind, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In England, man's gonna be like, I'm not inviting him to the party. He's gonna take all the girls. Mm. That's the difference. You see what I'm saying? So a man started to prefer to be in a, uh, uh, in America because man was. Congratulated and Even though it's more dangerous, there's love there as well. You see what I'm saying? For, for doing doing certain things. Like if you're fly, a five-year-old is going to tell you, oh, you you fly. Like a five-year-old will tell you that. In England, I, men will act like they can't see I think it started to change. It's it started to change recently. No, nah, it's not like that here. The hey, younger hey, generation. Hey, the younger generation has shifted and they've changed it. Like you embrace it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a fly. Like in comments, thingy, showing love. Like before it was like, oh, it's begging it. It's begging it. Everything was begging it. It's like, How's it begging it if you fucking rate some, someone's music or you think some, you're making a comment yeah. or something that's well, so positive shit's begging it? So yeah. we had a brethren from Harlem that um, he was 15 at the time, but super advanced. You already get into the back at 15. His mum had a boyfriend and then he told the guy, it's cool if you see my mother. This is 15, by the way, 14, 15. It's cool if you see my mother, but not in my house. My man's like, hey, oh, all right then. So he's gone up north to like Bington, Rochester, one of them places up there. He's on his way back. The fiend's cars broke down in the snow, all that type of shit. He's taken him twice as long to get back home. He's already angry, he's already pissed off. He's got in the yard, who's in the yard? The, the guy. He's gone upstairs, gone to his brethren's house, got 38, came back saying, dumped two in his chest, mum jumped in the way, jumped over her, dumped another one in his chest. The guy's gone outside, gone straight to the police station. He's gone outside with his shorts on, got on the phone, called his cousin in Staten Island. His, his cousin in Staten Island rose with us. 
So he's like, yeah, come to Staten Island, whatever, whatever. He's gone back upstairs, police rush his house. He's walking past them. They don't even know this is the kid coming down the stairs, walking past them. I've come back from, from school one day, I've just seen them in my yard, iceberg down. His cousin's like, yeah, it's my cousin, little D. He's gonna stay with you for a little bit. And I said, yeah, we've got extra spare room anyway, so he can stay there. He looks like a cool guy. And we just got on like a house on fire. But he's the one that took me to Harlem when he got bored in Staten Island, like, yeah, let's go back there quickly. So yeah, but I thought you said you can't be over there like that. He said, no, 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 let's just go back over there quickly. But he lives on 149th and St. Nick's. No, 151st and St. Nick's. Same building. And then Chiwells was on 153rd on Amsterdam, a block over. So he's like, yeah, that's my man, Laron, who just signed to, uh, to Cam. To and Cam so yeah. when he's taking me to Harlem, we're in front of Chiwells' building, fucking around with some girls and whatnot. And then Chiwells was in the front of the building. He's like, what, you're hustling? He called him Laron, he didn't even call him Chiwells at the time. He goes, what, you out here hustling, Lil Ron? He goes, no, 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 I'm just waiting for a cab. So like, that's the first time I met you. I was, yeah, this is my London guy, he's official, he's affiliated, whatever, ever, ever. So that's the first time I met you. Was. The guy who got Memphis Bleak to Stapleton, so this guy, um, Eli, his name's Fly Guy Eli, so he's, um, he's, he's like ghost faced people. And, TMF, um, yeah. TMF, like, so he's like... Theodore, you know. He, he, he got, he knows Bleak, so he brought, brought Bleak to Stapleton to battle and do his thing. So he's like, like our older kind of thing, like just showing us the battle and everything, like, and um, and he, we was in, um, we was in, we was in the Jex that day, and then he was Stapleton, just like, yo, yeah. we're gonna go somewhere. Like, we just oh, came back from England, summer holidays. Yeah. And we came back in. So, so he's like, you jump in the Maxima, take a drive with me. So we jumped in the car. We're riding. We're like, where are we going? Don't worry, worry about, about it, man. It. You're all right. You're with me. You're man, with a big homie. Pulls up whatever, to Marcy. Yeah, it pulls up to Marcy Project. Yeah, we've, we've been to Marcy before. Yeah, he had us in Jay-Z's old apartment, like where Jay-Z actually lived. The guy that up. named Rockefeller, Rockefeller. He, he used to be in a group with him called um, Original Flavors. He's the third guy. Ski Beats, Tone, and then Jay-Z. So yeah, so us, he had us over yeah, there anyway. Apartment. But this time we've gone out there. They're all outside. Everyone's outside. So Tata's little brothers are outside. Cool Von. Murder. Murder. And and Sheik. Yeah. So they've gone to us. Eli's got up to go to his, his brother lived over there, his half brother. So Eli's gone up to go see his half brother, just left us there with them, smoking, whatever. So he's like, yeah, where are you guys from? You guys rap? We're, we're from London. And he's like, oh, what, 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 what are you guys do? He's like, we trap and rap. He's like, they start giggling. So by the time, we've been there two and a half years. We know the play, it's the set up. It's almost like, do you know what? This is what it's like. It's what? like white man can't jump. We're like Billy Hoyle. Remember the remember yeah. Woody Harrison? Yeah, so, so you know, we don't say, oh, you can't take so him they, serious. But man. this is how real they are. They're laughing in our faces when we're saying like, we they don't care. They're just like, yeah. And it was like, oh, you from London? Well, welcome. You're you're in the biggest ghetto in America right now. They're giving us that spill. But they don't, they think we're from London. Like, just came there last week or something. They don't understand. We've already in two like, and a half years already, put in yeah, enough work. We're the, we were the wolves. Now. Where it's like we might as well have just lived. Just, just growing up out yeah. there. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah, let me let me hear something. Bro, we've gone off. We've gone they off. They brought some next guy that raps, he's rapping, we've gone off more. H Moneybags comes around now, who's down with, with Bleak, he's blood as well. He's gone off, we've gone off more. Bleak pops he was on up. That, he was on that Hot 97 freestyle, you know the one, that crazy one that they did? With yeah. uh, Freeway the one with all of them. All of them and yeah, all yeah, like yeah. that. So um, now we've looked up and you've seen Bleak walking into the projects. Lights hit him. Jules glistened up. Bleak's like 19 Blinging. at this time. Stupid. Bling and crazy. So he's just walked straight past the cypher. He's not even paying attention to what man are doing. He's gone over to some chicks. We're still going We're still off. still going off. He can hear it from there. He's come back round. He's, yo, yo, Fink spits out inside and I'll spit some. Yeah. We've gone off more. And he's like, yo, you can, these guys are going off. You yeah. guys are going off. You yeah, see? These guys you guys nice. got to be prepared. You, say, yeah, you, you, got, you, yeah, you said you guys got to be ready. You guys got to be ready. You got to come from anywhere and just do whatever, whatever, ever. And then as he's walked off, he said to his manager, oh, yeah, get their numbers or whatever, whatever it may be. Or, yeah, them guys got it. Yeah. They're nice. So and then, then after that day, remember? we realised now we're levels. Yeah, now we're levels. Like, that was, that's, that's, that was like, yeah, when we, when we stepped, when we went the, the ride back to Stapleton, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah now, we're, now, we're now, now we're like, we're like fucking Super Saiyan yeah. level now. And then Eli's, in the, you know what I mean? Eli's the guy in the hood. He's like a, you know what I mean? All so round. he went back, he got, he hyped it. That had, that had man hating as well. You see that, that man's yeah, like yeah, hating. Yeah, 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 you see yeah, when that yeah, happened, yeah, yeah. it was like, oh, when they're getting brought, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got, yeah, it got yeah. mad, so, so man, they didn't like it. My boys like did me, did me proud. They did me proud, da, 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 they're going off, this and that. So he was, yeah, he was proud of us. Yeah.
So we was with a chick called China that was from Harlem that got transferred from Harlem to our school that could rap. So we just put her down with a click and whatever, ever. Bad as well. So um, she's got Kooji spandex on and all that. She had a fat ass and all right. the things there. So we're walking through Times Square. He's pulled up in a white Benz. Like, psst, yeah, trying to holler at her. She's like, I'm with my brothers. He's like, no, 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 go, go talk to him. So she's gone over to talk to him. She's come back around. She's like, yo, you need to come over here. And how to rob us out. So everyone was talking about 50. Who's yeah. this guy that's, especially Ray and Ghost and them, like they yeah. wanted to see him for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was going to do a show in Staten Island and Ghost was like, yo, call me if he comes. Because we said that for lying about the. Because I robbed Ray, fingers for, for the funny ass ring. Funny ass ring. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've gone over to the car. He's got a beat playing. He's rapping. No, he said, what do you think of this song? I was like, yeah, this guy's hard. Yeah, yeah I, want, I, want to see, I want to see what he looks like. I wonder what he's been, because no one knows who he is. He whatever, like, whatever. That's me. That's me. It was like, what? So, oh, that's 50. So my, no one knows what he looks like at yeah. this time. He's telling us how Jay was dissing him at Summer Jam. He didn't even know he was backstage. And yeah, whatnot. he was yeah. like, I'm about a dollar. What the fuck is 50 cent? He's yeah, like, yeah, he, was yeah. seeing, he was right there in the front, and he didn't even know it was him. Yeah, or whatever. he was in the car. So he's so, passing the back of the car, but asked food. He's playing streets, he's watching on the TVs in there as well. Like. You know the ones that man's chopping it up with him. He's like, yo, use the London thing, innit? Like, exactly. you use that. And he starts going, my pocket's got the most. Uh, yeah. My finger got he's the most. He's even dissing like, Charles. Yeah, I the down south shit. That's what he said. You use the London shit like that. Da, 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 da. Mad, yeah. proper humble. Yeah, even then he was dissing Jar. He's like, yeah. So, um, yeah, he was dissing Jar to us. So, he got Chinese food, what now? But they just dropped man off. And he said, yeah, you man do your thing. He's like, keep it up, man. I can see you guys, man. Veterans touch, I toot my own horn with the elephant tusk. Can get these rapper brothers stuck like a cat and men barge a fuck. We won't play fair, nah. Gorillas and apes here in bait gear. Son, you, we ain't kidding, no. This ain't daycare. Might let the 4-4 go or the 8 flare.